now. Is that right? Say, his coming shall be like the brightness of the sun. Say, as the sun shines out of the east, or as the lightning flashes out of the east, even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. That's the book. So the return of, 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 the, of the Christ is the return of light. And that light is to return in the second uh, uh, resurrection, or uh, the second coming of the Christ, it is to return in the clouds of heaven. Confusion won't just be on earth. The biggest darkness and the biggest confusion will be in the nation. And that's when he will make his return in that confusion. And clear up, bring the light to the world. All right, that's, that's what, exactly what it means. All right, now, let's go, let's go on with it. When we look at clouds, and study their nature, their formation, we come to this knowledge that is inside. That clouds are water drawn up from the earth by the sun into a fine mist that the eye can hardly see. And this mist is raised high and high by the attraction of the heat of the sun into the higher regions of the atmosphere. The higher we get from the physical earth in the atmosphere, the colder the, colder the region is. Why? Because stone is a good conductor of heat. Stone holds heat very well. So when the sun comes out in the day, it heats the earth. And the earth holds enough heat to keep the lower region warmer than the higher region. So as the mist is drawn up into the colder, colder region, the mist collects together to form what we call raindrops. If you take a glass out of a, out of a refrigerator, you see moisture collects on it. That's because the glass is cold enough to make the mist in the atmosphere collect on the glass. So this is a, 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 an illustration uh, a, uh, that is exactly what takes place, of exactly what takes place when it rains. Now sometimes the contrast between heat and cold is not great enough to bring down rain. So what happens? The originator has designed that clouds of a negative force or electricity will move by and in contact with clouds of a positive electricity. And it will bring about a friction in the, in the electricity of these clouds. And what do we have as a result? Lightning. And the lightning will flash and it will be so hot that it will bring the proper contrast in temperature. There will be extreme heat and extreme cold existing together. So that when they rush back together, the moisture of the warm air collects together by, the, by meeting with the cold air, and there, right there is rain. Now I told you that to tell you this. The wise people in religion, ancient people, who had the truth as it, as it was originally revealed, they saw in the creation, in the physical creation, signs from God guiding them to the higher mental or divine creation. And they spoke, God put his language for divine development in physical things. He spoke to us through the physical creation. The Holy Quran says, that the heavens, in the heavens and the earth, are signs. And the word sign is called ayah, ayah, which means revelation. There's the sun of the revelation, the moon of the revelation, the stars, the clouds, all 
of these things are revelations. Say, even your own self and your own makeup are revelations. You understand? So how did God originally speak to us? With his physical creation. When we lose touch with the message that he gave to us in the physical creation, then we need revelation. Do you understand? All right. The sun stands for the body of truth from Almighty God himself. God's truth is the light of the world. The wisdom from Almighty God is the sun of the world, the real world. When that sun shines down on the moral body of people, Water in scripture means the moral body or the moral nature of human beings. Why is water called moral nature? Why does the scripture have water as a word for the moral nature of a people? Because that's the best symbol they could possibly get to describe. Water, if it stays standing still, it will become stagnant, filthy. Unfit to drink, unfit to use as a cleaning agent. Is that right? But the river water, it, it, it runs. It stays in motion. It has a way of throwing the filth out on the river bank. Is that right? And rippling through the water in the sand serves to purify it, to filter and purify the water. So the moving water is clean. The standing water is filthy. Now God called his missionary rivers because they run down from the mountain. They rebel against the mountain. They refuse to accept the mountain. And they run down from the mountain and ripple through the communities of the law people. You understand? They bring fresh mineral water from the mountain, something for economic strength. You understand? But they also bring pure water, something for moral development, to the communities of the people. And they are called rivers. The standing water grows filthy and stagnant. It can't move to throw filth. Out, of the, out, out from its body. And it can't ripple over uh, stones and other things to wash away its filth. Do you understand? Yes, all right. <laughs> okay. I wish you had all the understanding. I don't have time to interpret everything I'm saying. But some of the ministers, I believe you understand everything I'm saying. All right. The water ripples through and it cleanses itself. Now we have seeds, is that right? We're talking about water standing for the moral makeup of people. We have seeds that are salty. And there's an ancient saying in Arabic which goes like this. Which means you will never find seawater that is not salty. So God, so the scriptures say, he made the sea. He formed the river and the lake. See, nothing about ponds and standing water. Somebody else formed that. Okay, what does the sea, the salt of sea represent? The salt of sea represents that water with divine commandments in it. In our moral makeup, Almighty God has established some moral commandments, some moral law. Is that right? And that's the salt in the water of our moral fabric, our moral body. Why is it called salt? People like a little salt, but people don't like a lot of salt. You see? And people don't like to drink seawater. They can't do it. Seawater is not made for drinking. Seawater is made to keep out filth and germs. 
You don't find bacteria growing in the seawater. The seawater is much more cleaner than the lake water. Is that right? You can pollute the sea too, but if you leave the sea natural, the sea will be clean and healthy. You can't drink it, it's too salty. But you can eat the meat out of it, it's all right. Is that right? Because the salt is a cleaning agent. The salt is a purifying agent. It keeps the filth out of the sea. So this salt, salt is the moral law that God gave to our moral maker. But we don't like it, especially the individual that has to drink it. We like it when somebody else is drinking it. But if we have to drink the sea water, we don't taste some of it. Is that right? I don't care, care how good you are. Nobody wants to be attacked. Nobody wants to answer for their own wrong. It hurts them. Even the stone is mad. He takes it as salt. He'll take it, but he takes it as salt. Is that right? This is the seawater. Now, God, he, he, he first formed the sea. We don't read about lakes until we come to Revelation. Now, lake is a sweet water. We drink the water of the lake, we like it. So what, what does lake represent now? in the scripture as water. It represents that moral teaching that has no law in it. Christianity. Christianity is not based on law. It's based on love. Is that right? Faith and love, not law, say that Jesus did away with the law. Is that not what they teach? Okay, so the lake is Christianity. Now let's see, where does the beast come in the end of the time? Is he in the sea or is he in the lake? The book says that the beast was in the lake, ruling the world in the lake, and that God turned the lake into a lake of fire. Lake is not clean like the sea, and it certainly nowhere comes nowhere near being clean like rivers. So in this uh, false, a show of righteousness called the lake, a lake filled with filth and the beast. What is the beast here? His number is six, three score and six. His number is six, six, six. What does six mean? The earth weighs six sectillion times. The highest physical peak on the earth is approximately six miles high. The clouds that rise up from the earth only go up to about six miles. We're not talking science, we're talking religious science. There's a great difference. All right. David had to contend with a giant, Goliath, who had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot. All right. King Solomon's throne had six steps leading up to it. And the taxes that was collected and given to King Solomon in one year was six, three score and six. I'm giving you the Bible word for word. So what is the beast? Materialism. That's the beast. Now how has this beast come up into the revelation? How has he gotten himself into, himself into the congregation of God? How has he established himself in the moral makeup of the people who say they worship Almighty God? Go ahead, see. He has done it by taking the salt out of the water, by taking God's commandments, by taking God's righteous discipline out of the congregation, out of the moral makeup of the people, and telling them that they don't have to worry about commandments and laws anymore. Do your own thing. Just believe in Christ. But God said that 
that he would turn that lake into a lake of fire. You know, water don't burn until it gets filthy. You let the water get polluted enough, you can throw a match on it and blow the sea up. So this lake of Christianity has become so filthy and polluted that all we have to do is throw a lit match of truth in it and blow the whole thing up. All right, now let's go back to the lifting of the water up from the ground by the sun. Sun standing for the body of divine truth, God's wisdom. It shines on the moral nature of the people. And I don't care how wicked people are in a, in a, in a community or in a nation. If we shine the pure truth of Almighty God down on that nation, on the people of that nation, it's going to affect some of them in their moral makeup. And they're going to begin rising up out of the filth, the stagnant filth of the society, standing up, lifting their heads and their eyes and their minds to Almighty God. Okay, so when that is done, they are drawn up as a mist. And when people are being converted to God, the world can't see it. How many of the world saw exactly what was going on in the first resurrection? They saw that uh, the black people were being turned to black away from white. They saw that we were being made more decent, more dignified, more self-respecting, that we were born materially. But they didn't see that we were rising into the seat of authority over all the people of earth. They didn't see that. They laughed at this kind of talk. They didn't pay no attention to it. When I began talking, they heard what I was saying. They saw a lot of it. They liked a lot of it. But they didn't see all of it. But as that mist was lifted up and began to work, work with the, the hot and the cold of this world, it brought down rain. They heard thunder. They saw lightning flash. And they say, good God, the chief minister, he is something new, and I'm telling you, he's bad, don't mess with him. But it took, it took them time. They couldn't see what, I, what was happening at, at the beginning. And not only that, my own uh, self, my own person, as a child and a young man, nobody saw what was being formed. But God took me up in heaven. And when he dropped me back down, there was a thundering and a lightning. And pure water hit the earth. Well, right or wrong. All praise is to Allah. Now, let me tell you something. Right. Clouds are only mist water. The book says you are clouds in my feet. God don't raise water up for it to stay up. He means, the book means to say this, that those self-righteous people who say they know all about the scripture, they can teach the scripture, they're doctors of the scripture, scholars, they've been through the seminaries. They're clouds in his feet. They stay up in the air. They never come down to the people. They have truth in small fragmentary bits. They never bring them together as a drop that will be heavier than air. 
that will be heavier than emotionalism and go down deep as a bomb through emotionalism and hit the earth and give one after thirsting life. There are clouds at his feet. All praise is due to Allah. Almighty God has not revealed his truth for it to hang up there in the sky. He revealed it so that it will come to us on the earth. Do you understand? All right, now. Let's go back to the mountain. You see these skyscrapers they do? You can look at these tall skyscrapers on some days, and you see clouds look like they like to hang around those skyscrapers. Is that right? You who have flown in airplanes, I'm sure you have noticed, that clouds like to hang around mountaintops. That's right. You've noticed that, right? Yes. The wise, the ancient wise, they got their early messages from these physical things that God had found in the earth and in the sky. They looked at it and God revealed to him why he designed it that way. So just like I have built up stone and earth and piled them up like mountains to be mountains. I am going to permit nations to pile up their wealth to become great material powers, material mountains on the earth. And just like you see these physical mountains Attracting clouds, those new mountains of nations that will claim to be representatives of me, they will attract clouds. Clouds mean confusion in divine knowledge. They will attract clouds, and the clouds will hang right around the region. Where do you find the Christians cluttered together? where the big material powers are. If they find a mountain of material power, they're not satisfied until they get there. They might murder, kill, do whatever they have to do, but they will get to that mountain. And then the, the Christian bishops and, and whatnot, they will form right up there in the top of the mountain with the government, with the political leaders. Is that right? And the government looks down in the valley on us, and the church looks down in the valley on us. Am I right or wrong? Read the financial report. The wealthiest organization in the world is a Catholic organization. All right. Methodist, Presbyterian, these people are growing in physical wealth. But how much have they grown the world in freedom, justice, and equality? The men who brought justice to us were not preachers. Only a few preachers have done something. Most of the help that we have gotten to break the bands of slavery came from those who are not of the church. The government so-called freed us physically, is that right? And it was students of colleges and universities, students of knowledge, that led the revolution. Men of physical strength who devoted themselves to their people and sacrificed themselves for their people. Black people revolted, but not church people. Only a very few church people. The church as a whole never moved until somebody else had already shown that they're going to be successful with it. When the church see that somebody else is going to be successful with it, then they come into it. 
I'm giving you history that can be proven from history, what I'm saying. All right. But the church operates and works side by side with government. Is that the truth or is it not? All right. So the leadership of the church, they're clouds in God's feet. They are missed, broken up truths that have not been formed into drops yet to feed the thirsting earth. And they hang around the mountaintop. But Almighty God in His wisdom had, had, had ordained, had designed and ordained that this should not work against God. But God will take that that is formed against him and use it to advance his purpose. So he revealed to the ancient wise people that just as you see the clouds hang around mountains and they uh, go from the mountain and rain water out, they are going to serve to destroy the mountain too. Because the water that rains out of the cloud hits the mountain. And the mountain with its coldness serves as a good trigger to trigger off lightning, the flash of lightning, the cold and the heat, to bring about rain. And when this happens, there is going to be water rolling down the mountain. And a change of temperature I'll bring about occasionally. And melt the ice, melt the water that the mountain wouldn't let go down to the valley. I'm going to bring about a change in temperature occasionally. I hope you can follow me. <laughs> and it's going to melt that water that the mountain is trying to hold. And it's going to let it run down the mountain to the valley. And the rain is going to hit that mountain too. And when that water runs down the mountain, it's going to erode the mountain. Every time a bit of water runs down, it's going to take with it a piece of mountain. The mountain is high now, but I'm going to wash this well down into the valley. <laughs> All praise is what up. <laughs> so when the lightning flashed into the dark cloud, it's going to bring heat. And it's going to change the temperature around the mountain top. And it's going to make rain fall in the clouds. And that mist that was cloud, cloudy is going to drop as clear drops. And it's going to wash the knowledge that the mountain holds down to the meat and the under and the floor in the valley. It's going to wash the water that the mountain holds down to the valley of the weak and the poor and the divide. And in time, I'm going to level the mountain. Isn't that what the scripture says? That if God will one day level the mountain. All oh, praise is due to Allah. Not that he's against mountains. He's against mountains that have misrepresented and, and have gone to death the purpose for which he established them. So since they have risen up and now corrupted themselves and hold the people as slaves and won't let them come up, not any bit to up in the mountain, keep them at the lowest points in the valley. Since they have done this, I'm going to wash all of their wealth down into the valley and establish new mountains 
mountains in the order and in the form that I desire. Mountains that must be on the earth so that the earth won't shake. Oh, the Quran said that he had established mountains firm in the earth. Say, if you have not done it, the earth will shake with you and you will be lost. Is that right? So we have to have government. Governments are needed to keep the society, the world, from shaking and crumbling, falling out of place. But he don't want those governments that attract clouds and hold water in the form of ice. Build ice houses all over America to freeze the mind of his poor people. Brother and sister, Allah has revealed the truth to you. I'm you. He has 